Hello everyone. Now after studying so much of organic, now we are slightly away from tasting the real organic. For that we have to study this reaction mechanism. And once this reaction mechanism is completed, then we'll be studying in full fledged and uh, the speed of study will uh, increase from here now. So uh, up till now we have basically studied some kind of uh, um, general factors that operate in organic uh, that will be not directly asked as such, but those those factors, those topics will be somehow related in uh, understanding and conceptualizing the topics that are ahead to come. So to start and to already we are mature enough and we have is understood all the effects like inductive hyperconjugation resonance hydrogen hydrogen bonding and other things that we have already covered now this topic will mark the beginning of reactions and after studying reaction mechanism we'll start to study name reactions and it won't take much time to complete all of them in one breath like if we start we can complete in one lecture if i teach you very fast but it will take quite some time but no new theory will be coming like s this stuff that we have already studied that will be uh, applied in some proportion and s mm, you know, some ratios wherever it will be required and s s slight tit spits will be coming here and there and we'll be studying it uh, as it comes but chunk of the chunk or rather 99 97% of the theory have has been already completed and those we have to just apply in different kind of reactions not much of the new things will be coming along so it will become very easy and it will go very smoothly and all the reactions we'll be seeing here hyperconjugation is operating here resonance is operating here the f effect of solvent is there here hyperconjugation is there same thing will come over and over again so it will be very easy for us now reaction mechanism means mechanism means the mechanics of the reaction the pathway through which the reaction occurs that we have to know uh, you eventually things will become more clear as we proceed ahead but to start this I, I need to ensure that you know molecular or orbital theory before we delve into this topic I will not be teaching you entire molecular or orbital theory here but I'll be telling you what you need to know before we get started with the topic now molecular or vital theory you must be having some idea after studying atomic uh, structure that electrons reside in orbitals and you have studied s orbitals p orbitals d orbitals f orbitals that is uh, okay but apart from that what you need to know is For every bonding molecular orbital, we have a anti-bonding mo molecular orbital. Now for each bonding molecular orbital, we will have a corresponding anti-bonding molecular orbital. Now what is this bonding and anti-bonding will we'll be seeing later. But whatever orbital we have, you, the idea of orbital or the notion of orbital which you understand that is actually bonding molecular orbital or the orbital which participates in bonding. All right. So what you understand of this S, P, D, they are actually bonding molecular orbital which really participate in formation of a bond. For every of each of them, you'll have an anti-bonding molecular orbital. Next, you need to know that anti-bonding molecular orbital will will be opposite to bonding molecular orbital in their orientation in space if you have a bonding molecular orbital here if you have a hybridized orbital like this then just opposite to this you will have a anti-bonding molecular orbital that means if it is bonding molecular orbital then the orientation in space of the anti-bonding molecular orbital will be just opposite to bonding molecular orbital Right, so this is very important to understand the further mechanism that we are going to see. So, uh, bonding molecular orbital will have a corresponding anti-bonding molecular orbital. Anti-bonding molecular orbital will be 
stationed just opposite to bonding molecular orbital right apart from this you need to know that electrons for the sake of bonding resides in bonding molecular orbital right so generally anti bonding molecular orbital is empty anti bonding molecular orbital of the of the of the if if a uh, orbital is making a bond if if you have a carbon atom suppose this is a orbital of carbon atom you have a bigger orbital of chlorine atom and there's a bond here then this these two orbitals which are participating in a real overlapping for the sake of formation of a bond these are molecular bond uh, molecular orbitals bonding molecular orbitals and corresponding to these bonding molecular orbitals will be having anti bonding molecular orbital for both the orbitals so the electrons will be in bonding molecular orbitals they will be participating in overlapping to form a bond and in general general generally generally if there is no electron rich pc or there's no reaction ongoing then these two anti bonding molecular orbital will remain empty right unless something happens unless a reaction gets initiated otherwise they will remain empty so the electrons will be in a bonding molecular orbital for the bond and the anti bonding molecular orbital will be remaining empty all right the fourth thing you need to know before we really get started is there will be a limit of electron capacity to be held in both the orbitals together bonding orbital and anti bonding orbital now when we have a bond formation then the bonding bonding molecular orbital will be filled by the electron there will be another orbital overlapping they're not showing that but the bonding molecular orbital will be filled with electron the corresponding anti bonding molecular orbital will be in generally if there is no reaction ongoing it will be empty there will be a limit of two electrons that can be held by the system of bonding molecular orbital and anti bonding molecular orbital together now for for some reason whatever that reason be and there will be hell lot of reason for this if for some reason electron density starts increasing in this anti bonding molecular orbital then the maximum capacity that can be held in the system of bonding and anti bonding molecular orbital is 2 now when you have a bond suppose you have a carbon chlorine bond then there are two electrons in this bond all right there is a ongoing overlapping between carbon and chlorine and those two electronic wave are in both the orbitals so if we have been asked how many electrons are there in the orbital of carbon we are we are we, we are ought to say two and if you have been asked how many electrons reside in the orbital of chlorine again the right answer would be two but 2 plus 2 sounds 4 they are not four electrons they are two electrons and the electronic wave corresponding to those two electron resides in both the orbitals that's why when counting for the octet of carbon you count both the electrons and similarly for chlorine you bo count both the electrons because it's really a wave and you cannot distinguish between the electronic wave density that how what percentage is in this orbital what percentage is in this orbital it is not a stationary thing it keeps on moving and the whole electronic wave as such is occupying both the orbitals right so technically speaking this bonding orbital already have two electron right so the maximum limit is already to the brim so if for some reason some reason electronic wave starts to increase in this anti bonding orbital then the maximum li limit cannot be breached out so what has to happen is either the electronic wave should not enter the anti bonding orbital because it is already packed to the maximum capacity but if some strong force is forcing electron into the anti bonding orbital then there's only one way out that some electron density must move out of bonding molecular orbital because this rule that the max the two electrons at max can be kept in the system of two orbitals this will never be violated and this will be the most important point in the coming reactions or the coming topics we are going to see this will form the statement which i'm giving you this this will make your life so goddamn easy to understand all the topics and this will really be the pivotal point to understand everything which is coming ahead so you need to clinch with this and you need to know this at least if you don't understand if you need to know this take it as a information 
is not really to understand anything. Now I'm giving you information, you get clinched with this and start working on this as it comes wherever the reaction will be there. So the thing is they are bonding molecular orbital and anti-bonding molecular orbital to get her can hold two electron right if for some reason electron starts increasing in anti-bonding orbital then some electronic wave have to leave bonding orbital to compensate the increase so that the electronic wave there is only corresponding to maximum of two electron so this fourth point will be a very important point to understand what you're going to see ahead all right so uh, these are the four things we need to understand the reaction mechanism immediately what we are going to see so you need to know there's a bonding orbital which participate in bonding there's anti-bonding orbital corresponding to every bonding orbital anti-bonding orbital is a station is is located in space just opposite to bonding orbital right generally anti-bonding orbital is empty if for some reason anti-bonding orbital starts to gain some electronic density then the maximum limit will be starts to be breezed out so some of the electronic density must leave the bonding orbital this much you must understand all right